M.2 drives are becoming more and more prevalent for system builders these days. Not only are high-end PCs taking advantage of their smaller size and wire-free setup, but because of the closing price gap between these drives and their 2.5-inch counterparts, even budget buyers are getting in on the action. So what makes these drives so special, and which one works best for you? The new DarkBase 700 from Be Quiet features a spacious interior with room for up to EATX motherboards, built-in PWM fan hub, and legendary Be Quiet build quality with included Silent Wings fans. Take advantage of its full modularity by removing or adding panels or even completely inverting the motherboard tray. Thanks to its LED accent trim that you can configure through any RGB header, it'll look great no matter how you build. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. M.2 devices come in several different flavors, and one of the appeals to the M.2 socket is this flexibility. Not only can you attach storage drives of different types, but M.2 also offers the ability to add Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity through slots with different keying. What we're going to be focusing on today though are SSDs, both SATA and the newer, faster PCIe NVMe versions. SATA devices have been around for many years now, and we're on our third revision of the protocol, which can handle theoretical transfer speeds of up to 600 megabytes per second. This is certainly fast, but 2.5 inch SSDs have been pushing that speed threshold for a few years now. Moving data over the SATA bus has been basically capped since drives broke through the 500 megabytes per second barrier. And the fastest drives on the market today usually sit around 550 megabytes per second read and write. In order to go faster, a different way to move data between the storage medium and the chipset was needed, and PCIe fit the bill nicely. M.2 can actually use both the SATA bus or PCIe lanes depending on what kind of drive you plug in, and speeds will vary accordingly. Today I have seven M.2 drives from different manufacturers on hand, and we're gonna put them to the test. The first two here are SATA devices, and as such will provide performance much more akin to what you might be used to seeing out of a standard 2.5 inch drive. The first drive is kind of a wild card, as it was sent to me by a Chinese company kind of out of the blue and I know very little about it. This is the OV Blade, and it's the smallest capacity SSD in our test at only 120 gigabytes. The next drive I'll be looking at is actually one that I don't have any B-roll of because I've reinstalled it back into my main editing rig and I'm too lazy to take it out again. Sorry. This is the Crucial MX300, a 525GB SATA device I've been using for the past few months. I also have five drives on hand that take advantage of the higher speeds afforded by PCI Express. First out of the gates is the Western Digital Black 256GB M.2 SSD. WD has recently made some inroads into solid state storage after specializing in spinning platter hard drives since basically the beginning of time. A-Data also sent over their XPG Gamex S10 drive, which has the distinction of being the only device in our test today that sports its own heat spreader. Now, I would stop short of calling this an actual heat sink since there are no fins or pathways for air, but the heat spreader should hopefully allow the drive to maintain lower temps. Next up is probably the best known product out of the group, the Samsung 960 Evo. With the fastest rated read and write speeds, along with legendary brand awareness, it's often the drive that gets recommended the most when it comes to M.2 devices, and we'll see if it's worthy of all the hype. I did a full separate review of the A-Pacer Commando, and right away you can tell that this is somewhat of a different product than the others. It still uses an M.2 drive installed on a PCIe riser card inside of the aluminum housing, and still transfers using the same protocol. But it seems that it's designed more for form than function, and we're gonna test that out. And lastly, we have the HyperX Predator, a 480 gigabyte SSD from Kingston. This one comes in at a little more expensive than average, but from a highly reputable manufacturer. I've prepared a bunch of charts to compare different aspects of drive reliability, price, and performance as tested in the BPS Customs Lab. All tests were done on my Z270 test bench with a 7700K overclocked to 5 gigahertz and no GPU installed to avoid heat pollution down onto the drives. You'll not only see actual results, but also manufacturer published specs for maximum read and write speeds as well as something called mean time between failures, which is an indicator of how long the drive is supposed to last. I've wrapped up our comparison data with a breakdown of each drive's cost per gigabyte of capacity that it offers. Enjoy.
So let's look at some takeaways from our collected data. Overall, it seems that SATA drives are going to run much cooler than their speedier counterparts, with an average temperature of 46.5 degrees Celsius versus 71.4. This not only will contribute less to internal case temperatures, but also sustained high temps can lead to drive throttling. Each drive has a rated maximum sustained temperature, and although they can operate above this threshold, speeds will diminish rapidly once the controller gets too hot. This is one of the reasons that many motherboard manufacturers and even custom water cooling companies have hopped on the M.2 heatsink bandwagon. It's not just for aesthetics. We also see that the Crucial MX300 is by far the best value for the money when it comes to storage space at only 29 cents per gigabyte. So there are definite advantages to choosing a SATA M.2 drive. But when we look at overall speed, PCIe is the clear winner here as we kind of knew that it would be. Although performance versus manufacturer ratings does tend to vary pretty broadly, overall there's no real comparison if you just want the fastest storage solutions around. The Samsung 960 EVO really blew me away with its results, far outpacing even the second fastest drive, which was probably the A-Pacer Commando, although it did vary by test. The last thing to look at is reliability, which unfortunately I don't have millions of hours to trial. Based on manufacturer data, both the XPG Gamix and the A-Pacer Commando are rated for 2 million hours. But when you think about it, even the HyperX Predator, which is rated for half that time, should service you just fine as 1 million hours is 114 years likely longer than you'll need that new desktop for. So what do you guys think of these M.2 drives? Does one appeal to you more than the others? Do you need the most storage for the least amount of money? Maybe you'd prefer the fastest speeds, no matter the cost. Or maybe you want something completely different looking inside your tower. Get subscribed to the channel and then let me know down below in the comments what you think. Also, don't forget to check out my merchandise store at the link down below if you wanna help support the channel. And as always guys, thanks for watching.